Hi everybody, thank you for joining us today. This is Chef Lance with from FieldToTable.com. Today we are gonna make one of my favorites and it's a great way to use maybe some of the lesser cuts of uh, wild game you may take. We're gonna make green onion sausage. This sausage is one of my favorites growing up in Louisiana. Typically if somebody got an animal and said that they were gonna make sausage with it, they made green onion sausage. It's a delicious sausage and I'm really excited to be making this for you guys today. All right, so first and foremost, whenever you're making sausage, it's very important to work with all of your items being cold. So I've had our, um, our, per our pork ham here in the uh, freezer and it's to a point that it's slightly, slightly crunchy. The same with our fat. I also have our catch bowl sitting in ice. Again, whenever you're doing this, it, all of your product should be so cold it almost hurts your hand. And you wanna work quickly to avoid the uh, grinder building up a little too much friction and giving, giving you undue heat. So we're gonna get started. So again, we're just gonna, we're just gonna run our, our strip of wild boar ham. For this, I actually um, like to cut in strips. And cutting in strips, it actually fits the uh, neck of the grinder better. Ideally, we would work with a large die and then for the second grind, go to the small die. Unfortunately, with this being hunting camp, the large die got left at home. So we're making do with what we got. So after I run a few pieces of, of my pork through, I like to cut fat into it. And typically the ratio that you want is, is uh, pretty similar to like a good hamburger mix. You want a good 80-20. And if during the course of grinding, you actually feel that maybe your grinder starting to get maybe just a little too hot or your meat is starting to warm up a little, there, there's nothing wrong with the, with the addition of having a cup of, a cup of ice water and adding just a little bit of ice water in. That moisture is gonna do a couple of things. It's also gonna help keep the sausage moist. So when you cook it, you, you're not gonna end up with dry sausage. All right, so we've done our first grind. Our next step, we're gonna grind this again. And uh, if we were going from a large die to a small die, then that would be the point that we would do so. Also in the second grind, I am gonna add a little celery and onion that I diced up earlier to help flavor the sausage. By doing the second grind, what you're really gonna end up with is a really nice, smooth texture. And with the addition of the vegetable, it's gonna add flavor and give your sausage a depth that you're probably not accustomed to in most sausages. Once we get this all together and seasoned up in the meat mixer, it's all going to be nice and nice and balanced and really flavorful. And also while doing this step, I kind of like to loosely form my meat into the shape of the grinder so it will hopefully feeds a lot better. And you don't have to agitate the meat as much with the tamper. It's always good whenever you're in the kitchen. Think of what you're doing and what kind what kind of shortcut that you can do to make it a little less work on you. All right, so now that we've finished our second grind and we incorporated our vegetable into our grind, um, I'm gonna, I wanna show you guys a really cool, efficient way to clean your grinder after you get done with this and make sure that you get all of the product. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a few feet of commercial wrap and this trick, only works with commercial uh, plastic wrap, but that's easy enough to get at uh, Sam's Club or Costco. And quite frankly, if you're if you're doing a lot of production of sausage at home, it's it's a spend worth worth doing. So now that I've taken several feet of it and I've just kind of balled it up into a little rope, I'm going to turn on the grinder and I'm going to feed this kitchen wrap in and it's gonna push out everything that was left around the auger and in the chamber. And your kitchen wrap's just gonna find itself in a nice little ball right there wrapped around the blade, which when you peel it off the blade, it pulls all of, all of the residual meat and stuff out of the blade as well. So, so now I'm just taking off 
our die and I'm going to pull the kitchen wrap from around the blade and auger. And all of this now can just be discarded in the trash. And now your auger is all cleaned and funky and this is not going to end up in your sink. All right, so for our next step, we're going to put our uh, ground ground pork and a vegetable mixture into our meat mixer here. And um, for this, this step is uh, pretty important. This is where you're gonna add all of your seasonings that are gonna flavor the sausage. So first and foremost, I'm gonna add a little pink salt. It's also known as Prague powder or uh, cure number one. Uh, this stuff's really powerful. Uh, so I'm only gonna do about a about a teaspoon for the size that, that we're doing now. What this does for you though, is it actually adds a uh, antibacterial preservative into your product and it, um, and it will help reduce greatly the risk of uh, botulism spores, which is uh, pretty important. The next additive that I'm gonna add is some, uh, is some um, non-fat dried milk powder. What this is gonna do is it's gonna act as a binder within the sausage, and it's also gonna retain moisture, and after, after we finish putting this all together, it's gonna help our sausage remain much more supple and juicy sausage. Here is the green onion that gives us green onion sausage. Also, these are my dry spice blends. Uh, the, in the, this container, it's a spice blend that I make and keep uh, literally on my kitchen counter, which is basically kosher salt, ground thyme, rosemary, onion powder, and garlic powder. And this is a Cajun seasoning blend that I make as well. But if you're not inclined to make your own seasonings, uh, for this blend, you could purchase a product called Cavenders, and it's pretty similar flavor profile. And uh, for this, you could use any of the uh, plethora of off-the-shelf Cajun seasonings that are out there. Um, think of any one that maybe resembles uh, Tony Sachery's. With the exception of the pink powder, uh, we're going to go pretty liberal with all of our other ingredients. So we have about a teaspoon of our cure. And again, it doesn't take a lot. Now we're gonna add our, our milk powder. And I'm going that I'm going roughly a cup. And our Cajun seasoning. We we are working with a lot of fat, so we definitely want to work to season that up and a little bit of our, I just call it my table blend, just to, just to reinforce those flavors again. And now we just run it through our meat mixer until everything's well incorporated. These uh, meat mixers work really well with um, really getting your spices evenly evenly distribute it through. And our sponsor Meat actually makes a smaller version of this. So obviously most of you at home aren't probably gonna need a mixer quite this large, but be sure to check out their website. They have some great products and are the products that we exclusively use with from heel to tablecom All right, so now that we've uh, added our seasoning, we've uh, blended our mix. Uh, one, of the, one really important thing you wanna do before you continue on to either casing your sausage or uh, packing it away, is you just wanna take a little sample and just get an idea of the flavor profile. So to do this, I like to just reach in and grab just, just a little bit and make like a little small patty. You know, something that's, Something that's only going to take a minute or less to cook. And I can tell right away that I have a really good ratio of fat by how it's rendering out in my pan, which that's, uh, that's, 
That's nice. I like that. So now that my uh, small pat, my small sample patty is sizzling, I'm just gonna let this go probably for a, a minute, maybe a minute and a half per side. Just, just in, again until it is uh, until it's done. But again, I'm I'm really liking my fat ratio because I'm getting like really nice caramelization when I. Uh, when I season, cook this off in the pan, and I can see that I'm really getting, getting uh, good fat and moisture coming out. And uh, again, I'm just uh, making a little patty just to get a, just to make sure the uh, flavors are balanced and my batch of sausage is good. What's uh, great about doing this step now is if my flavor isn't where I want it, I can, I can always add more spice. If something happened where maybe I think it's a little too much salt, then either I could grind a little more meat or I could, uh, I could possibly add a few more vegetables. I, I have avenues that I can work with, which is really important. So as you can see, it's already cooked all the way through in the center there, and I'm just gonna try a little taste. and the flavor is phenomenal. From this point, I'm gonna to proceed to go ahead and uh, put my sausage into the casing. Okay, so now we are gonna to move to our stuffing phase. And so by hand, I'm just gonna take our sausage and add into our stuffer. And I like to kind of push down a little bit and make sure there are no air pockets or anything undesirable. Just tampering our sausage down and pushing out any air that could be trapped. If you are using a sausage stuffer like this, it's very important to make sure that the O-ring gets greased just a little vegetable oil would, will do. I'm placing the sausage casing over our um, stuffer tube. And uh, some of the things to keep in mind is uh, sometimes the first casing for one reason or another just will um, be a little difficult to get on, but uh, you know, definitely the longer these uh, soak in water and soften up, they, they become easier to work with. And this one is actually going on pretty easy. There's always a point where it, it can become a little difficult, but we are having some good luck with this one today. So with the uh, sausage casings, I would like to use an all natural casing. So these are all natural hog casings. And uh, you can find that, you can find these at uh, a pretty good butcher shop usually, or you can even just order them on Amazon. They're uh, pretty readily available. And, um, and as well as uh, all the uh, seasonings and products we're using today. Now we're gonna stuff. Um, one of the things that I like to do when I uh, first, when I start to stuff my first link of sausage is I like to just get the sausage to start to come out of the tube. And that way I know that there's not any air left in the end. And then I tie the end of my sausage casing. And now that my sausage casing is tied, I'm gonna, Gonna continue to make fill with the casings. And I like to do about a six, eight inch link, do a couple of twists, and that's gonna seal the casing. And just 
keeping my hands damp. All right. It's important not to go too fast because what you don't want to have happen is that you break one of the links and then you have to start all over again. All right, so now that we've uh, finished putting our sausage into the casing, we're gonna take these and we're gonna load them on our rec tech today and we're gonna smoke off a few for dinner this evening. All right, so here we are. We got our green onion sausage rested and a few pieces sliced and uh, today we're doing it as if as an appetizer, but it's more than at home in a bun with some onions and peppers or just pan cooked with a side of potatoes. Be sure to uh, like, subscribe, and most importantly, click that bell for notifications. Thanks for watching. Come meet with us again on some of our other videos.